Let's talk about Run, Rabbit, Run, an Australian psychological thriller which is one of Netflix's latest offerings. I'm going to discuss key plot details of the film, offering my feelings about them, which means there's going to be major spoilers throughout, and one rabbit hole which you may want to peek into is the Horror Exchange, our upcoming project, links below. Sarah Snook has had a tremendous run in recent years, most notably for playing Shiv in Success. She took over as this film's protagonist after scheduling issues with Elizabeth Moss, who was originally going to helm the lead role. Here, Snook plays her namesake, Sarah, mother to a young girl named Mia, and they have a bit of a messed up family history. Sarah's father has recently died, her mother Joan is in a care home with dementia, and when they were kids, her sister Alice went missing. Now, Mia is acting all weird, stating that she herself is Alice, and this leads us down a rabbit hole of grief, loss, and kind of a mystery, but not really though. That's because I don't think that Run Rabbit Run is anywhere near as poignant or mysterious as it sets itself up to be, or presents itself as throughout the cumbersome hour 40 runtime. For a start, it draws upon possibly the most drawn upon novel of all time as a literary influence, that of course being Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. We have white rabbits wandering around aimlessly for some obvious symbolism. The sister that's gone missing, being named Alice, is a dangled in front of your nose reference. I believe there's some visual hints in the background of some scenes, like at one point seeing a red playing card painted onto a window, like the Queen of Hearts or something similar, and at one point Mia paints a tall tree, much like the one Alice sleeps beneath. Even if you wanted to get into the characters themselves as references, we have Mia, and it was Mia Vashakovska who played Alice in Tim Burton's adaptations. We also have Joan, and it was Joan Bennett who played Alice in a creepy as balls short film from 1930. Plus, you could go as far as Sarah possibly being inspired by Sarah Lamb, who played Alice in the Royal Ballet version. As cool as these nods are, whether intentional or not, I can't help but think that the Alice in Wonderland aspects are by far the most interesting thing about Run Rabbit Run. At the entrance to this film, there was a potentially genius concept lying on the doorstep. What would it have been like, from Alice's family's point of view, if Alice never returned home from Wonderland. You could twist that in a pretty hardcore way, because it's literally the disappearance of a seven-year-old girl, and though the Wonderland commonly experienced in media is from Alice's perspective, what impact would her leaving home have on her family over time? Not only that, but what if there was a daughter who not only resembled the missing Alice, but began to channel her? Honestly, in principle, I think this concept could have been a stroke of mastery, if done with the right balance between dark and quirky. However, I think Run Rabbit Run tries to be a bit too bleak for its own good. It's definitely a grim story and a depressing watch, because it lacked any kind of Wonderlandian charm to accompany it. The colour palette for the film is so dull and lifeless, and I get that because the colour of the world has been sucked away, relating to the grief of the characters living within it. But Nevertheless, you're still looking at a dull and lifeless film. I think a version of Wonderland which managed to find that balance between dullness and vibrance was Jan Schwankmeyer's version, Alice, from 1988. That film's colour palette is worn out to give it a rustic look, but when tied in with the surrealist stop frame animation in the film, it feels like it has that sense of oddness about it, which ties in to the source material. It had an equilibrium between realism and surrealism. With Run Rabbit Run though, it was too familiar in its approach. I felt like at times it was running a couple parallels to The Babadook in terms of its visual style and deeply grief-stricken undertones, applying a sinister threat as a horror movie embodiment of tackling that grief. But there's another issue. I didn't really feel a lot of threat here. 
sure, Mia wearing the pink rabbit face mask was a cool look, but other than saying she's not Mia a few times, I never felt like Sarah was in any kind of danger. Mia was never an imposing figure, and we've seen bags of strange masked children over the years. Goodnight Mommy springs to mind as a fairly recent example. Of course, we have suggestions down the line that, in fact, Sarah is the abusive one, and it's her going crazy which has impacted Alice and Mia. But by the point in the film those ideas begin to be fleshed out, I was tapping my watch just like the White Rabbit himself. The 28th of June 2023 was a very important date indeed, putting this film in front of Netflix's user library. Yet this one couldn't provide an abundance of wonder. It's sad because the acting in this film is really solid. Snook does well in the lead role, and Lily Latore is a good little child actor. Nice to see her getting a big opportunity to get her career off the ground, and best of luck to her for her future. I do also like some aspects of the visuals at times, yet equally it relies a bit too much on Wonderland iconography to dress itself in familiarity. I spent more time and was more engaged in looking out for recognisable imagery or themes for the already established Wonderland than I was in digesting what Run Rabbit Run had to offer in and of itself. Perhaps a case of tackling a far superior source material and leeching its strengths and ideas more than successfully being able to create its own. I also think that the film is so dark to look at. I wish it was more visually striking, which it definitely could have been if its core concept had better execution and was allowed to be harnessed in more ways than just the odd sprinkling here and there. Wonderland aside, Run Rabbit Run also has a bingo card of usual horror tropes, such as the creepy child, questioning if a relative really is a relative, recent death in the family, and going to a place from childhood to face past demons. Maybe not a full house on the bingo card, but definitely a line at least. I I think it's a real shame that it's so difficult to craft something fresh given the age of the horror genre, but you can see that even more recent examples have rubbed off on this one, such as the previously referenced Babadook, I can also see shades of Hereditary and even Relic. It's a domestic horror film with thin slices of the supernatural wrapped around it, though I don't think it's a particularly strong example of that subgenre. These are my overall thoughts about 2023's Run Rabbit Run. Please let me know your thoughts on the film in the comments below, what you thought that ending was about, and what your favourite version of Wonderland is. Thanks for checking this honest review out. Please don't forget to check out the Horror Exchange. I'm Connor from Unleash the Ghouls and cheers out.